Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Master's House. We need to apologize. We're supposed to start at eight at uh, no eleven, 11 thirty thirty ish. and ish. Um, <laughs> ish. And we've had some technical difficulties, but we are hooked up and and uh, everything's working, right? Yes. Well, we're like really it. glad to have you. I'm Pastor Jim. This is Katie Langlois, What's up? and we are here to minister to you from the Master's House at eighty six fifty nine Staples Mill Road in uh, Henrico, Virginia, just north of the city of Richmond, Virginia. Yes. We usually start our uh, service at 11 and we have worship. And then, uh, so if you want to, if you live in the area, come and join us. And you can join us live here with all our friends here. Wave mm -hmm. yeah. So Yay. we're thankful for our on online friends and those that are watching this uh, even after today. Um, and so, uh, but um, we're sorry we're late. But at least we got started and we can post this message for those that might have missed it. Amen. Amen. So let's see. I have some things to mention. I did about that. Oh, also, this gets posted on Facebook Live afterwards, and uh, we put it on yeah. our website at it's TMH. It's posted at Facebook Live currently. Live currently, right. We also post it uh, on there permanently, too. And then uh, at our website, tmhnow.org, and we put it on YouTube at TMHRVA. And just to let everybody know, um, uh, what was it? It was... Um, 45 years ago, I gave my heart to Jesus. Yay. And, uh, Rock Church in Virginia Beach. I've been saved 45 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, isn't that something? And uh, so I'm celebrating my spiritual birthday. Spiritual. Spiritual birthday. Spiritual birthday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so uh, I'm, I'm glad for that. 45 years and just looking for more years. Amen? Amen. But today's message is identifying the voice of God, part four. And we're really going to get into more of a little, a little bit of uh, identifying as opposed to other voices today. But uh, just in a little bit, and this is part four, so I'm just going to mention a few things on each uh, week, what we've learned up till now. We talked about the word uh, uh, voice in the Greek is phone. Everybody say phone. Phone. And it's spelt with English letters as P-H-O-N-E. So uh, God wants to phone you and have a conversation with his voice to you. Amen. Amen. And he doesn't need any technical things to make that happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the definition of that word phone or voice in the Greek is a voice of the sound of uttered words. That's right out of the Greek. Isn't that something? That's awesome. Revelation 3.20, New Living Translation says, look. Everybody say, look. 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 Uh -huh. He says, I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice, voice is phone. That's the word phone. Open the door. I'll come in and we'll share a meal together as friends. God wants to talk to us. And we need to know and understand uh, you know, how he communicates uh, how we can recognize his voice, and how we can get rid of other things that might be in the way of us hearing his voice. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Part one, we talked about the many voices which attempt to fl influence our lives. There are a lot of them, and you, I would suggest you go back to listen to those messages. They're posted in, in the same places I mentioned before, and uh, about all the different kind of voices that try to influence us. Uh, we talked about 11 ways that God has a voice. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to tell you any of them. You've got to go back and listen to the message. And that's probably not a, a final 11 ways. It's just 11 ways that I thought that he could communicate mm -hmm. with us. And then um, we said this in part one. God always has, always is, and always will be speaking to his people. Yes. And that's very important. Part two, we talked about the Holy Spirit speaks only what Jesus speaks. Jesus speaks only what his Father speaks, and God only speaks his word. Somebody yes. say amen. amen. And the word of God is the foundation for all that God has spoken, is speaking, and will be speaking forever. And let's look at John 1.1. 1, 1. We didn't look at this that week, but it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the what? Word. The word. And the word was what? God. With God. And the word was God. God himself. So we know that all that he speaks is the word. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Look at Matthew 24, 35 in the New Living Translation. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Amen. That's a powerful thing. So yeah. we can depend on the word when he's talking to us, and everything that he says will be in line with his word. Amen? Amen. Then we went to part three, and we talked about the art of listening, uh, the challenge of busyness. You ever get so busy, you just wonder, oh, oh, sometimes I'm like this, oh, yeah, Lord, how are you? Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> Uh, maybe I need to talk to him a little bit here and you just right. kind of forget these things, you know, because we're so busy. And we talked about uh, creating spaces for listening. And we gave some examples like Elijah on Mount Sinai with a small, uh, small little voice, you know. And then we talked about Mary and Martha with the pressures of everyday life. Mary chose the better thing. Remember that? 
And um, in Luke 10, 41 through 42, it says that Jesus answered and said to her, Mar Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. So we need to choose the good part, and that is to listen to the Lord and make sure we're hearing from Him. Amen? Amen. And it may take a little time, a little privacy, whatever it takes. That's what God is looking for us to do. And I had this um, uh, paragraph that I found out of a book uh, last week that we mentioned, and maybe uh, Katie can read this paragraph right there. Sometimes we need to quiet our hearts and minds to hear God's subtle guidance. The distractions of life can draw drown out. Sorry, the distractions of life can drown out His voice, making it essential for us to create moments of stillness. Essential to create moments of stillness. That's interesting. In order to hear the Lord at certain times, Amen. Now, let's go ahead and pray, and we're going to get into part four. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your message. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving me the message, and, and I ask that you would give us the anointing to share it, Katie and I, and that it would transfer to everyone who's listening uh, now and in the future, that it would be a blessing to them and have an, a positive effect in their lives. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. the word will go forth yes. and yes. not come back void. In Jesus' name, thank everybody you, said, Amen. 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 Well, I want to start today on about uh, something interesting. And that in order to properly identify God's voice, and I would say identify God's voice among so many others, we have to know three things. Now, there may be more than three things, but these are three things that I thought of that were pretty, pretty important. The first thing is that we must know God's character. Amen. Amen. If you're going to hear him properly, we must know a lot about him. Uh, we, number two, we must know what pleases him. I'm not just talking about what the laws that he might be put up, but what pleases him and what displeases him. Amen? And third, we're going to talk a little bit about each one of these. We must know and receive both, this is important, his love and his correction. Amen. Now that's interesting. A lot of people don't want to talk about those two things. But if we want to hear his voice, we must know his character. We must know what pleases him. And we must know and receive the love he has for us, but also the correction that he has for us. Amen? Amen. So let's go back to number one. We must know his character. You can read that paragraph right there, Katie. Uh, we must know <laughs> he is good. He is love. He is forgiving. He is faithful. He is full of grace and mercy. He is truth. He never changes and he never lies. He never condemns. He never tempts, tests, or tries anyone with evil. And how do we know that? It says it in James chapter 1, verse 13. It says, and remember... When you're being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. That's right. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. It's an interesting version, the New Living Translation. And so we have to really know about his love. And sometimes people are brought up in home situations or family situations or uh, go through things in life that they get a distorted picture on who Father God is. Amen. And it's very difficult for them to see him as he really is in his character. But we're going to really, you're going to, in order to hear his voice, you're going to have to get into the word, have to get around people who know God, so you can understand his character and divide between what God is speaking as opposed to what you have heard spoken over you and, and in life for the years Amen. to come. Amen? Amen? Very interesting. So there are other voices that are contrary to God's voice. Uh, see if you recognize any of these. I've got five kind of areas. Uh, uh, voices that lie, mm -hmm. voices that abuse, mm -hmm. voices that condemn, mm -hmm. voices that accuse, and voices that belittle. Yes. And those voices are what are holding so many people back in success in life because they don't know that God never lies, he never abuses, he never condemns, yes. he never accuses, and he never belittles. Amen. Quite opposite, amen? amen? Let's talk about each one of those words. Uh, in the word lie, I found a whole bunch of other synonyms that kind of go in that, and you'll, you'll, you'll know if we hear a voice like this that it's not God. Can you hear the, read that, those words there? A voice that would deceive, fabricate, falsify, mislead, uh, dis be dishonest or have hidden agendas. That's not God. Mm -hmm. Everybody say, nope, that's not God. No. No. This word abuse uh, that I was looking at, that we could put words like mistreat, exploit, harass, bully, and victimize. 
And that's not God. Mm -hmm. Nope. That, anything that's like that is not God. Mm -hmm. The next one would be tempt. Um, to entice, lure, seduce, provoke, or allure. We know that God tempts no one or mm -hmm. uses evil to tempt anyone. Amen? Mm -hmm. This is an interesting one. Condemn, and some other words would be to denounce and criticize. If mm -hmm. you've had voices in your life from different areas that are denouncing and, and criticizing and condemning, that's not God. Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. Not at all. Uh, then there's the word accuse. What are some things that go with accuse? To blame and never take any personal responsibility. I've heard that voice before. Oh, it's, so it's not your fault. It's all my fault. And I'm, 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 I'm the problem and not you. You know, that kind of thing. You've heard those, those words spoken. And then the last one is belittle, which can be to demean and discredit and to scorn. Mm. So I wrote this. The more we understand about God's character the more we'll be able to identify his voice clearly and separate it from those that are contrary to him. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so the second thing, well, first we must know his character. The second thing we must know is what pleases him. Now, I like to say that instead of, you know, putting up, oh, well, here's the law, here's the Ten Commandments, asking somebody, but what do you think pleases God? What ple and what might displease him? You know, and maybe because of those things, we have certain rules that he's made. But let's not even go to the rules. Let's talk about what pleases him and what displeases him. And I'll say this. God's voice mm -hmm. always speaks faith and obedience. Mm -hmm. Say that after me. God's voice, God's voice always, speaks always speaks faith, and, faith obedience. and obedience. And when you start hearing those kind of things, faith and obedience, you're going, you know, uh, <laughs> yes, that's probably the Lord. Amen. And James, oh, let's go to Hebrews eleven six. I got two scriptures for that sentence about that God always speaks faith and obedience. Hebrews eleven six says in the New Living Translation, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. So if we're hearing Him say things like, "Where is your faith?" Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, do you really, do you believe, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay, I see what the Lord's trying to, to tell me something. I need to, you know, I need to build upon or, or, or get back in faith concerning something. Amen? Amen? The book of James, chapter 1, verse 22, in the New Living Translation, this is an interesting thing about hearing. You can read that one. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. So I put those two together. I'm going, well, he always speaks faith. And he's always speaking obedience. Amen. Amen. But not in a condemning. Mm -mm. And not in a, a, a deceiving way. Or with a false agenda. Mm -mm. Or all those things that we heard in those, those words. Amen. Amen. Uh, so number three, we must know and receive. I had said this. Both his love. And his correction. Amen. Now that's not as easy. Sometimes we don't really want to hear that. <laughs> but um, it is true. In order to understand God's voice, if we hear something about correction and something about love and something about faith and something about obedience, well, uh, you know, I don't think it's the devil, y'all. No. <laughs> you know, it's not. But he's doing it in a graceful and loving way that he wants us to succeed in life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Never condemning. Second Timothy three sixteen through seventeen. Read that, Katie. New Living Translation. Okay. She's putting it up for uh, our on online there folks. There, go ahead. Um, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Oh, okay. Go ahead. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Both sides, both sides, and we need to be open to that. Verse 17. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And that's why we need to know about his love and correction. Because he's trying to prepare us and equip us to do every good work. Amen? Amen. And that's why. And so he loves those. Uh, well, let's, let's read this. Let's go, I'll read this one. Hebrews 12, 6. This is a familiar scripture in New King James Version. For whom the Lord loves, he Chastens. Say that word, chastens. Chastens. And scourges. <laughs> that is a tough word. Scourges or scourges. Every son whom he receives. So I said, I need to read that scripture. What does those words mean, chasten and scourge? 
or scourge, however you want to say it. I don't know. And the definition of chasten uh, in the Greek is? Oh, uh, to punish for the purpose of improved behavior. Oh, you mean God will punish me for the purpose of improved behavior? Well, somebody might say, well, that sounds like an Old Testament scripture. That's the book of Hebrews. Amen. That's a New Testament scripture. So somehow, there's some grace in there and good things for you. Yes. Amen? And somehow. Me. <laughs> somehow. Somehow. The word scourges, here's the definition of that. This is an interesting definition. It is not strictly action taken for sins in particular. Rather, it entails all and any suffering which God ordains for his children, which is always designed for their good. Huh. Now, we know he tempts, tries, or no one with evil, bad things. But somehow, he's doing some serious correcting right there. And we need to say, yes, Lord, I uh, hear it. Yeah. And help me, help me to walk in that. Amen? Because he wants us to succeed. He's doing it for our betterment. Yes. God's voice is always edification, exhortation, and comfort. Mm -hmm. And we can see that in 1 Corinthians 14, 3. So even though we see that he is chastening and, and scour scourging, it's still through edification, exhortation, and comfort. Go ahead and read 1 Corinthians 14, 3, New King James Version. <laughs> But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Let me, ask, let me give you another word where he can come and step in and in the middle of a mess try to encourage you. Uh, in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, I'll read this one. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So if you're saying something or someone else is suggesting anything that you can't, well, you'll never do that, or you can't do this, or you can't do that. God says this to you in the middle of that. If you can believe, and here's that edification, here's that comfort. It's still correction, and it's still faith. Amen? If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. You're not limited. You are blessed to the point that I can help you, and you can have success over this. Isn't that something? That's awesome. So we can't come to God and say, well, I just can't do this. I can't get the victory over this, or I can't do that. He's going to go, um, let it's me give you something say. edifying for you that if you can believe, can believe mm -hmm. all things are possible to him who believes. That's really encouraging. That's yeah. that's that's up here. It really is. Yeah. But 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 no, 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 no buts. But but I was no, no, but my father, my, no, but my friends, no, but my sister, but no, but the, no, if you believe. Let me encourage you, God's sake. Let me let me father you. Let me um, train you, educate you. Let me tell you what the truth is. Amen. I um <laughs> I've been interested in artificial intelligence and um and seeing what it does and there's a website called chat gpt which is one of many and from what i'm to understand i'm learning what it is that it's a computer system of millions of computers that puts all kinds of information together and can sort of make sense out of it and you go in there all it is is a chat you write a question and it'll come within seconds with an answer or what you want to do so i wrote this in chat uh, gpt and I wrote this. This was, um, uh, well, let's see. Let me see. Oh, here it is, yeah. I put in this question. Fill in the blank. It's not a question. I wrote fill in the blank, dot, dot, dot. God's voice is always with an underline. That's what I threw to the computer. Uh -huh. Fill in the blank. God's voice is always. Uh -huh. Fill in the blank. And so, chat GPT within seconds, right before me. This is what it says. Read it. Uh, God's voice is always whispered in the quiet depths of the heart, waiting to be heard by those who listen with sincerity. Yes. Can you do me a favor? What? Go grab me a tissue. Okay. Excuse me, but I'll have to blow my nose. But <laughs> it happens to famous people on TV, too. God's voice is always whispered in the quiet depths of the heart, mm -hmm. waiting to be heard by those who listen with sincerity. Amen. I read that and I went, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. That it had that, it, it just answered my question that way. Mm -hmm. 
God's voice, say that, God's voice, God's is, voice always is always whispered in the quiet depths, the quiet depths of, the heart, of the heart, waiting to be heard, to be heard by those who listen, by those who listen with, sincerity. with sincerity. What a definition. Isn't that interesting? So there's, you know, it's funny that you can put that out there and it comes back with that. But um, as you can see, it's very important for us to know the difference between God's voice and other voices. Right. And we've given several examples and several pictures from the Bible. And uh, But next week, what, what I want to get into is how do you hear God speak? Mm -hmm. In other words, we're all different personalities. Uh, they, there's a thing called the five love languages, and we respond differently to certain things. That's an interesting teaching out there. But uh, we've been listening to some messages um, by Havila Cunnington, Cunnington. on um, sort of how people hear. And uh, we're kind of looking into that and, and looking into the word about how we all respond differently Amen. to things. And, um, and, and, it's, and we're going to share some of that about you personally. We know God's voice is out there and there are other voices out there, but how do we individually sort through that and work through it and hear God? And that's going to be interesting. But, you know, Moses heard from a burning bush. Elijah heard from a still small voice. Abraham heard from the angel of the Lord. Mm. Peter saw a vision on a rooftop. Paul heard a voice and fell off his horse. Mm -hmm. Mary heard from a visiting angel. That was Gabriel. Joseph heard from an angel in a dream. Same angel, Gabriel. Peter, James, and John heard from a cloud in the sky. Mm -hmm. Peter heard from the book of Malachi. Mm. Right? He preached that on... Uh, in Acts chapter 2, we hear from both the Old, well, we hear from both the Old and the New Testament, as opposed to Old Testament saints that died. They didn't have the New Testament to hear that voice, but they oh, knew the Old Testament well, voice. Yeah. But we have both voices Amen. of the Old and New Testament. We also hear from the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Amen. And we also hear from the body of Christ. Yes. Great ways for the voice of God to come and for us to sort through. And I hope that some of those examples are good for us to think about what we're hearing. And, um, you know, God is always faith. Amen? Always faith. What else did we say? Obedience. And obedience. Amen. You know, Peter peached. Uh, peached. Peter peached. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's read Ephesians 4.16. This, okay. this was in response to that we hear from the body of Christ. Each other. And this is why we get together to in church that's why we gather that's why we do a zoom on monday nights tuesday is nights to, uh, tuesday nights yeah <laughs> thank you very much You're welcome it's every tuesday night we do a zoom uh, we have a family zoom we call uh, uh family worship and it's great but it's so that we can have the corporate voice of his body mm -hmm. amen it's very important ephesians four sixteen says this from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen. Now, we're all part of the body, but yeah. uh, we're not the same part. No. You know, um, uh, somebody's the knee, somebody's the toe, somebody's the ear, uh, the ear somebody's the bald head, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the idea of the body made up of different parts, joints and, and things with different purposes, they're and every all very part important. does its working share. Yeah, and when you hurt your toe... Like she did this last week, it affected every part of her Everything. body. Everything. It was. <laughs> so uh, she's getting much better. But it's yes. funny how just a little. Uh, a little piece digit, makes a, a big digit difference. digit of your body when it's yeah. in pain. It's like that's the only thing that's hurting and you can't do anything. You know, it's just holding you back. But uh, I like what uh, Peter preached at the birth of the church. This is Acts chapter 2. Of course, we know that he was inspired by. Uh, the book of Malachi, and of course many Old Testament scriptures that he saw coming to pass. But he preached this message in Acts 2, 17 through 18. You can read that, Katie. This is a New Living Translation. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. This is a prophetic word at the beginning of the birth of the church, that his people are going to be filled with the spirit and hearing from him. Amen. Amen. And declaring him yeah. and uh, the, the vision of the corporate thing. Uh, young men seeing visions and uh, 
old men dream dreams. And uh, it, it says that I'll pour my, my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Right. And so don't tell me that ladies can't talk in the church. No, you're not looking at that scripture right. You don't understand God's character of what he's saying. Amen. Amen. And, uh, but, uh, if, you know, and the first people to preach the gospel were those uh, that were at the, uh, at the, when the stone was rolled away and saw Christ, and they ran into town. It was the women who went in and said, hey, he's risen from the dead. Isn't that something? So they were sharing the gospel. Isn't that something? Amen. So I like this because in those days, and this is where we live, he's going to pour out his spirit even on his <laughs> servants, men and women alike, and they shall prophesy. Amen. So, in summary of this week, understanding the character of God is foundational for believers seeking to hear his voice clearly. Mm -hmm. It provides a framework for trust, mm -hmm. discernment, consistency, alignment with scripture, a relationship building, guidance, and commitment to holiness and righteousness as we walk together and uh, walk out our holiness before the Lord. Amen? Amen. And walk in the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you have something you want to share before we Not move? Not the moment. Mm -mm. So uh, next week, again, we're going to talk about how you hear from the Lord. And we're going to see different personalities and how what inspires us the most and how God, uh, he knows us so well, he can reach us for who we are. Right. Amen. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Thought, any thoughts about that? Not at the moment. It's going to be fun. <laughs> but uh, I do have a voice, a word from the Lord. Uh, as I was sitting at the desk today, just putting, packing up to come here. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is just a, a, a word he gave me, so I wrote it down and I'll share it with you. Uh, in parentheses, subject yourself to the voice of God. And I had to think about that. Subject, subject yourself to the voice of God. And I thought, well... How would I subject myself to the voice of God? Well, I know one thing that I said years ago, and that is if I have to prepare a message every week, I'm going to have to study every week. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be something that if, if, if I make that commitment, I'm going to have to do that. So it's going to be good. I can't just say, well, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to study this week. Uh, so I, I applied that pressure to myself knowing it, I'm supposed to anyway, God had called me, but I also knew that that was going to be a good pressure just to make sure that I'm in the Word every week and, and, and growing with Him. Uh, another thing is to attend church, uh, to read books, to study, to get around other saints, do, do things that would subject ourselves Amen. to the Word of God and to His voice, and that's really, really a great way to learn. Amen? Amen. Um, I want to say this um, uh, to uh, everyone here and everyone online. If you've never called upon Jesus to be your Lord, the Lord of your life, then I want you to pray this prayer with me. Let's you follow me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I know, I know that I'm a sinner, that I'm a sinner, and that I fall short, that I fall short of your glory, of your glory. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again, for my sins and rose again. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins and ask you, and ask you for forgiveness, for forgiveness. Please come into my heart. Please come into my heart and be the Lord of my life and be the lord of my life thank you for your grace and mercy thank you for your grace and mercy in jesus name i pray in jesus name amen. amen amen now to anybody online anybody here if you just prayed that prayer for the first time please let us know write to us at pastor jim p-a-s-t-o-r-g-a-m at t-m-h now t-m-h n-o-w dot org and let us know that you received the lord that's most amen. important especially if you want to hear the voice of god amen, amen. and uh, to give your heart to him so please let us know that'd be great well, let's uh, go ahead and prepare our gifts, and I know that's part of what the church is about, is to bring our gifts to support the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. and that's why people uh, believe in tithing, and the word of God in tithing is, is being a part of the kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, and the rest is to, to do what God wants us to do, but for him, and building the kingdom on the earth, that's the way he does it. Yep. He does it through the tithes and offerings of God's people. So I want to thank those that support this ministry, and uh, we're blessed, and uh, we're glad that you're a part. We also have a lamb's basket where we can bring food here, and we can take it to the uh, food pantry that's uh, just a few streets away that serves uh, over 60 churches in the area. Mm -hmm. And we also have a missions control mm -hmm. every month. And for the month of February, we had Dwayne Byerly, who was a speaker last week. He's from Prophecy and Promises, who teaches 
teaches on end time revelations. And he, we had a great time last okay. week. But what we're doing now is when we have a guest speaker, um, and, and uh, in order to have an a, a offering and a way to send it with that, to guarantee that it's a blessing, amen? Yeah. Amen. Uh, I decided let's use them as a missionary for the month, and that gives everybody a little time to maybe do some now, some later, or pray about what God would have them to do rather than just taking up an offering in one week. So when I called uh, Dwayne, he said, wow, that's really nice. And so I said, yeah, we'll receive an offering for your ministry every week for the uh, uh, month of February. And anything that's marked missions, anything marked missions, we'll send to you and your ministry to send you and uh, prosper you as you travel. And there's a scripture I want to share with you that really, you okay? Yeah. There you go. And I want to go to 1 Corinthians 16. Verses 1 through 2. And this to tells us a very interesting principle in the New King James Version. It, Paul is talking to the Corinthians. And he's, um, he's getting ready to, to come there. Uh, but he says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there may be no collections when I come. If we look at this, he's coming, and where he's going, every place he's going, he's receiving an offering to take back to the saints for the support of the saints in Jerusalem. And so he says, now concerning that collection, as I've given orders to the churches in Galatia, so you must do also on the first day of the week. Lay something aside, let it build, and then when I come, it's not a burden, and we know that we're going to really be able to send a good blessing on the way back. Amen? He was a missionary. And so if we consider... Uh, traveling ministries or teachers or things like that or that come through here and if we do that very thing we're supporting missions for the kingdom of God can somebody say amen, amen. amen. so there's a picture of Dwayne on prophecy and promises that's his uh, name of his ministry and he liked the idea so much he says well since you're gonna mention my ministry and receive an offering for four weeks can I send the people a blessing each week and I said sure so I have a slide that he sent me and, and this slide says Europe and Prophecy, and it says prophecyandpromises.com, and there's a coupon code on there. QR code. A QR code. <laughs> it's also a coupon code down there, but that's what he wrote. It's a me. QR code. But it's a QR code, and if you take a picture of that QR code, and I'm going to post it on Facebook, mm -hmm. that'll take you to his website, and you'll be able to listen to a message of his, and it was a, a free message um, on, um, let's see, I thought, oh yeah, Europe and Prophecy. He preached a message called Europe in prophecy, and so uh, he's saying that you get, get that and go listen to it. May it be a blessing this week. And the next two weeks, he's going to have something new each week to, 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 as we mentioned him, to give back and say thank you for uh, being a blessing to him. Amen? Amen. So you can use that by taking a picture of it and, or showing, looking at it through your camera. It'll take you right to the site, and you can listen to that message that he talks about Europe in prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all gifts marked missions for the month of January will go directly to uh, his ministry. And so how would they support this ministry also? Okay, so uh, one of the ways is to give um, online at tmhnow.org, um, which I'm going to bring up real quick. There it is. Um, and if you go to that website, then there's a giving platform. We also use Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. You can download it on any device. Just make sure that um, you are giving to the master's house in Mechanicsville, um, and you can indicate where your gift is going, whether it be tithe, offering, etc., missions. Or missions, yeah. Um, but whatever. I mean, yep. whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wherever. Um, I don't want to place you in a box for any reason. Um, also, if you are here, there is a black box, though, and you can uh, use the white envelope at the back if you would like to indicate where your gift is going there as well. Um, if you are not currently here and you would like to send by mail, um, you are more than welcome to do so. P.O. Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. Let's pray over our gifts. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to establish your kingdom on this earth. And we give by faith yeah. in missions, tithes, and offerings, whatever they are, by faith that your kingdom yeah. would be established on earth in Jesus' name you, until you return. Thank you, Thank you, Father, for that opportunity. We call it blessed. Yes. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Amen.
How would they find out more about us if they'd like to learn more? All about right, the check out Show? our website, tmhnow.org. You can also um, connect with us uh, where you are right now at Facebook at TMH Now, unless you are watching us from our YouTube channel, which is TMHRVA, uh, which you can check out some more um, messages there. But also we have the FamilyBibleRevolution.com website, which is about our vision for family. Check yeah. out more of the videos there. Um, and then if you would like to, you can always join us for Tuesday night, Tuesday night Zoom Tuesday, family worship. Tuesday. Yes. 7 p.m. Eastern time. You can log in to tmhnow.org or familybiblerevolution.com and you can go to the calendar tab. Click on the link that will sign you in, give you all the credentials and you can join us for about 40 minutes. Please come and be a part of that. You will love it. I beg of you to just join us on a Tuesday night. You would just love it. You'll learn so much. And it'll be a blessing to you and your family. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So if you have any prayer requests, you can send it to Pastor Jim at tmhnow.org. Yeah. And we just want to thank you for being with us and uh, promote our message and keep joining with us. Amen? Yeah. Uh, we're going to pray and say goodbye to those online. Father, thank you for everyone who's come online. We call you blessed, happy, healthy, whole, yes. and prosperous yes. in Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. We'll say goodbye for now. Be blessed. Bye. Bye.